Art Attack is sponsored by Pridstick. This is an Art Attack? This is an Art Attack? This is Art Attack! <laughs> Are you like me? You can never find a place to put down a wet paintbrush when you're painting. Ah, <laughs> there it is. What you need is a wide mouth frog brush holder. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. To make your froggy brush holder, you need some of this stuff. This is self-hardening clay, and you can get it from toy and craft shops. And it's brilliant, because it's modelling clay that hardens by itself. You don't need to bake it. And with one bag, you can make loads of stuff. So just tear off a handful and roll it into a nice, soft, smooth ball. This is already soft in the studio lights. And then just place the ball down like that. And then take your paintbrush and just very carefully push your paintbrush down into the front of that ball to create the frog's mouth. And you need to push it far enough down so that the clay holds the brush and it doesn't fall out. Then just roll it about a bit just to open up the mouth and then take it out and take another piece of clay and roll that into a smaller ball this time. Place that down and then just flatten it into a circular disc like that. Then take a ruler and just chop the top third of that disc. Just roughly the top third, doesn't need to be accurate. And then turn your ruler around and chop it in half the other way. So that you now have two big back feet for your frog and two smaller front feet. Then to create the sort of frog's webbed feet effect, just make small indentations into the clay with the side of your brush on its edge like this and then just very carefully lift the ball up turn it over with the mouth at the front and just dab on some water onto the underside and this will act as a sort of glue on the clay so that you can then stick on those feet and put the two big back feet on the back sticking out to the side and the two smaller front feet can go on just underneath the mouth and you need to be very careful with this you can take some time doing it i'm just doing it quickly to show you here and just put that last one in there like that and then very carefully turn it back over and put it to one side then take another piece of clay and roll it into a sausage that's a bit longer than one of your fingers and just very loosely bend that over in half and then just slip this in the gap between one of those big back feet and the body. Just poke it in with your finger or the brush. Again, you can take some time doing this. I'm just doing it really quickly to show you. And put plenty of water in to glue it in. And then do the same on the other side, another sausage of clay. And just fold that over and squeeze that in between the other back foot and the body. And there you have two big back legs on your clay frog just like a real frog. And then just roll two smaller balls of clay and a dab of water on the top. And you have two great big froggy eyes. And it's great that this water just acts as a glue. And then put the whole thing to one side to dry. And it may dry overnight, it may take a little bit longer than that. But when it's dry, look at that. The self-hardening modeling clay has self-hardened and it's actually gone rock solid. Look at that. And then paint it and you can paint it using poster paint or acrylic paint. And it's a good idea to start with to paint it a nice froggy green. I'll just slot that on there just to show you. And then you can paint on some detail when the whole thing is green. And there's mine. Look at that. What I've done here is I've painted some spots on on the front and the back. I've given some nice wide eyes. I've even painted his mouth, his wide mouth red, and I've picked out all that detail 
in felt tip pen. And there he is, and you can use him to stand your wet paintbrush when you're painting, or you could even put a pen in it when you're writing to stop your pen from rolling around. And you could even do them in a different colour. What about this one? There's a red one there with sort of blue spots. And you could use different types of modelling clay. I like the self-hardening, but this is the stuff that you bake. Be careful with that when you're using it though. And this is just the ordinary soft modelling clay that you can get. And how about your own favourite dough recipe? There's loads of those in books. And you could even invent your own little creature. That's a bumblebee. But again, you must do a nice wide mouth. Try it yourself. A wide mouth frog brush or pen holder. Hello, it's the head here. Oh, they're such a dinky little idea. And to make one, all you need to do is roll a handful of your chosen clay into a ball. Press a paintbrush or pen in to make a mouth. Press a smaller ball of clay into a flat disc and use it to make four webbed feet. Add some legs, make two balls for eyes, let it all set and paint it. And you'll have your very own friendly froggy pen or paintbrush holder. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm trying to think of ideas for big art attacks, I just fancy doing something really arty.
before. Oh, that was very artistic. I've always wondered what he kept in his pencil case. Hey, do you want to see the picture I laid out using what's in my pencil case? Not bad, is it? See what I can do when I try. My mum will like that, she will. Here's one for you. Have you ever seen this stuff? Embossed lettering. It's lettering that has been specially printed to stick out from the paper. Now, it looks very professional, but it's also very expensive. So why not make your own? All you need is a cheap piece of coloured paper and two wax crayons. Now, you can use any colour paper you like apart from white. I've gone for some orange sugar paper. And you need two wax crayons, one that's a lighter colour than your paper, so that's yellow wax crayon in this case, and one that's a darker colour than your paper. And I've gone for a brown wax crayon. Now, to do your lettering, you have to decide what it is you want to write first. Now, it could be your name or you could be making a poster. And the idea is to do thick, chunky lettering but it's also a good idea to do it very lightly in pencil first. And that's what I've done here. You may just be able to make out the word art there, and I've done this very faintly. Now, to make it embossed and look as if it's sticking out from the paper, just take your light crayon, in this case, it's a yellow wax crayon, and just pick out the left-hand lines on each part of each letter. So there's a left-hand line that part of the letter and you also need to pick out the left hand lines and the top lines of each part of the letter so there's a top line up there like that and there's a top line on that bar that goes across the A and then if we go over to the R here there's a left hand line that goes down that part of the R and again there's a left hand line there in this part and it's just a case of trying to think if the light was coming from the left of your picture which edges would it be shining on if the letters were raised and let's just go over to the T and there's a left hand line there and then a top line there and there now if the light was over to the left and shining on the top then the right hand edges and the bottom edges would be in shadow and that's what we're going to do now take your dark wax crayon and just pick out the right hand edges of each part of those letters look that stick there on the A there's a right hand edge and on this stick here there's a right hand edge there and a right hand edge there and there's a bottom edge because that would be in shadow and another bottom edge there. And look at that, that's starting to look embossed. I'll do the same on the other letters. Go along the bottom edges and the right hand edges of each part of the letter. And there's a bottom edge in there. And that top edge on the R comes round, you've got to watch it on the curved letters, comes round to the right hand and becomes a bottom edge. See that under there? Like that. And you've got a right hand edge there. And just finish off the T, a bottom edge, a bottom edge a right hand edge and a bottom edge just to finish it off and there it is embossed lettering that tricks your eyes into believing that it's raised from the paper and you know you can use homemade embossed lettering on lots of different things how about on your posters for a start that looks really good doesn't it and you could always decorate your exercise books or your drawing books with it that looks very professional and very expensive. And you know, the great thing about this technique is your lettering doesn't have to be perfect to look great when it's embossed. Try it yourself. Homemade embossed lettering. Oh, that's really effective. Just take some coloured paper and sketch out some chunky letters. Then use a lighter wax crayon to do all the left hand and top lines on each part of your letters and use a darker crayon to do the right hand and bottom lines on each part of the letters. Extremely easy embossing! Hmm. Hello, my name is Charlie and I looked at the light, shape and colour of an eye. Then I drew a giant one so it stares out at you. Ha! 
Hi, my name's Nicola, and I had an art attack by drawing a larger-than-life eye. I'm Annika. I looked at the different colours in my classmate's eye and studied where the light hit the pupil. Then I drew one. Hi, I'm Vicky. And I'm Louise. And we observed each other's eyes and drew a huge one. We then shaded it with all the colours we had seen. Then we covered it in PVA glue to give it a more shiny effect. What a brilliant art attack. Big eyes. Here's a bit of fun. Try making an eye. Blow up a round balloon so that it's just a little bit smaller than your head. And then take some PVA glue and mix it in equal parts with water and just slop it onto your balloon and paste on some strips of newspaper. And the idea is to cover the balloon in three layers of newspaper and glue papier-mâché. It won't take you long to do that. Just slop on big strips of newspaper. And when it's done, leave it to dry. And when it's dry, it'll look something like that. And look at that. The three layers of PVA and newspaper have gone rock solid. And you notice I haven't got all the way to the end there. That's so I can get my scissors in to burst it. Oh, there it goes inside. And I can now get the scissors in and cut the papier-mâché balloon lengthways from the top to the bottom. And when you've done that, you've got two halves. Look a bit like masks, don't they? Then paint those two halves. Paint one white and one to match your skin. Now, this white one is actually going to be your eyeball. And the thing to do on the eyeball is to just very carefully draw an outer circle like this. And that's for the iris of your eye. And then do an inner circle for the pupil. And then you can paint it any colour you want. You can use poster paint or acrylic paint for this. I'm going to use some poster paint. And again, you can do it any eye colour, blue, brown, grey or green. And what I'm going to do here is I've got some blue. I'm going to do a blue eye. And it's just a case of flicking in across the pupil like this. And it doesn't matter if you go over that pupil we're going to paint that black in a minute but whatever you do don't go over that outer line and when you've done the whole of the iris just dip your brush into some black paint and just dab it around the outside edge of your iris because if you look closely at your iris in the mirror it tends to be a little bit darker around the edges of those coloured streaky bits. And when you've gone around the outside edge of the iris, just colour the pupil, the middle bit in, black. And it's a good idea to just leave an, a white circle as a sort of highlight. And when you've painted it, just leave it to one side to dry. And then take the other half, the half that you painted the colour of your skin, and cut that into three equal bits. See that? Three equal bits, and then throw one of those bits away. You won't need it. Take those other two bits. They'll be the eyelids. And then take your eyeball and glue the top edge of your eyeball and the bottom edge of your eyeball. Just a little strip of glue along both and press those eyelids into place like that. And then leave the whole thing to one side to dry. And when it's dry, look at that the eyelids actually stick out slightly from the eyeball so it looks 3D. And I've even put on some eyelashes, just painted those on. And do you know what? The weird thing about these big eyes is that wherever you put them, if you put them on a desktop or even if you hang them up, the eye just seems to follow you wherever you go. <laughs> Try it yourself, a big eye. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra! Attack is sponsored by Pridstick.